Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I am Ninja Guy X at or or Ninja Guy VR and uh, today we're doing a very nice interview uh, in our a new episode of iTai. We got a very special guest. I've been talking about this game for some time now. But before we do that, let's go ahead and say hello to everyone in the chat. We've got ST, welcome to the chat, my friend. We've got Four Scars Gaming. Thank you for joining, my good friend, to the stream. We've got Granite T Rock, bonjour. He's a he's a liar. He's not French, guys. He's he's totally a hundred percent English. Don't don't believe what he says. We've got David Wilson, welcome my friend all the way to UK. And we've got another UK friend here, Miss Phoenix. Welcome. Good afternoon and evening to everyone. Uh, so guys, today, like I said, I tie. If you don't know, uh, first I want to give a quick shout out to some very cool uh, you know, VR interviewers. There's some good content creators out there who does awesome interviews, such as Rough Talk VR. Uh, let's talk Oculus and those two actually made an interview uh, for Sky Climb before so definitely check them out and then uh, Vism is a really really good one too but there is one thing that is uh, you know that I'm very not happy that they don't have and that is a tie yes today my friends I am wearing my Super Mario tie and this is because uh, in celebration of this game that is has some elements of Mario so I thought I'm gonna wear my favorite tie today my Super Mario tie now guys without further ado let's go ahead and introduce our host of today and it is none other than Raphael welcome my friend to the stream hello how are you doing a pleasure to be here man it's so good to talk to you and to, and to everybody in the chat yes uh, we are so excited about the game and I want to thank you for being our Discord and be playing the game. Thanks for playing, man. Thank you so much. So, uh, you know, Raphael mentioned that he's excited and he's the game director of, of the game. And to be honest, when I first heard about the game, I thought that Raphael was the community manager because he's been so <laughs> active around everywhere. He's been talking about the game, showing trailers everywhere, talking to everybody. So, you know, when I've learned that he wasn't the community manager, I was like, oh my gosh. So, uh, you know, it's cool it's to show uh, how much you're excited about, you know, your own game and, and being out there talking about it to the whole world. Yeah, it's, I think that's similar to other indie studios. Like I'm a, a partner at VR Monkey, and I'm also the game director for SkyClimb. And in a studio, in the studio, you must do whatever you need to do to make the game successful. So you program, you do marketing, you decide about art, you try to pitch the game to yeah. to distribution to publisher so you have a, a lot of different hats yeah. you speak to uh, a random person with a tie you know to, to... <laughs> uh, that's awesome and, and it's awesome to talk to uh, it's a pleasure like it yeah. and it's so important to to talk to the players like to to the gamers so it's uh, it's it's really good to be here that's awesome. Yeah. And, and today it's a holiday. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, the it's a little day. bit extra. We're all like <laughs> relaxed and, and, you know, ready to do this. So, uh, Raphael, you know, for the people who don't know you, can you introduce yourself? You know, what do you do uh, at VR Monkey and all of this fun stuff? Sure. VR Monkey is a Brazilian studio dedicated for VR. 
we were founded in 2013 so we are one of the oldest studios for vr like 10 years ago and we do a lot of boardings and also on it games so to understand like we are one one of the largest service providers to the industry since 2019 uh, vr monkey ported more than 35 uh, games to different platforms to PlayStation VR 2, to Quest, Pico, all the industry, like <laughs> we are really <laughs> at all place. And we also have, we already launched some games for like Gear VR, really old uh, hardware, like from 2016, oh. 2018, really before Quest. And in 2000, uh, last year, we launched Galaxy Kart for PlayStation VR 2. And now we are going to launch our first title to the official store on Meta, that's SkyClimb. Uh, I joined the studio five years ago. I was not a Original developer. Yeah. <laughs> no, I no, was no. not, I'm, I, I'm not a, a founder, but, uh, and I was originally, I was just going to work with um uh, industrial training it's another capability of virtual reality like for education and other apps but uh it was like a secondary uh vertical in our studio and the gaming the gaming side is of course what everyone <laughs> was excited about there working and then we decided like two years ago we thought that we were prepared to be focused in just one vertical so now vr monkey does a hundred percent uh focus on gaming and i changed my role as a sales director to the gaming director of the new title so it's yeah. been quite a journey <laughs> yeah and it's a very interesting story how how that happened and we're definitely going to deep uh, dig deeper into that yeah. so um if i'm not mistaken pedro kayat is one of the founder of uh yes of your monkey right you guys pedro were friends a... before even you know were you guys friends before? sure yeah. <laughs> yeah the our story dates from 2008 wow. we studied together we had a master's in italy mm. uh we are both engineers but pedro is a computer science engineer and I have a master industrial engineer, so I'm really far from computers and, <laughs> and tech. It's uh, and when we started our career, Pedro already knew he wanted to work with games. Uh, but I have worked in the financial industry for ten years. So I was in the the tie you are wearing. I use I use it the tie, but not not the. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Much more serious ones. I mean, he collects like coins, right? So, I mean, he'd be perfect for a financial <laughs> business. <laughs> and I have been uh, dealing with many different industries like banking, chemicals, retail. But by 2019, I was looking for technology. I thought that I should uh, move from financial industry directed to work with a technological company and I was looking for a lot of different uh, fields personally I love 3d printing I have a 3d printer by my side here it's something but I thought that technology wasn't that it wasn't ready like for what I uh, I expected to to do with the printer mm. so I decided to talk to Pedro because he's is my smart friend and he doesn't know everything about technology mm. and he said you know we should try a virtual reality I'm working with it for the past five years and I quest has just launched and I said okay let me try it yeah. it was like 30 minutes using the device and I was convinced that I said, man, this is ready. Like wow. virtual reality is the thing It's it's going to work. It's a product. Uh, let's do it. So fun. <laughs> so, I like that. That was our story, man. Yeah, that's awesome. It's a, you know, I love the story and, uh, you know, VR 
and Monkey definitely deserve the credit. Uh, you know, the games that they've ported also are things as, such as Runes Magus on uh, PSVR, Vampire the Masquerade, Synth Rider on Pico, and uh, many, many, you know, popular games. So a lot of, you know, developers comes to you guys for porting. Uh, and now uh, you're a powerhouse because not only are you like currently porting, you're also working on sky climb you're working on galaxy car you're like supporting those games actively and uh, you know uh, I, th I think you have other projects which we'll also be talking but uh you know enough about uh, vr monkey let's talk about sky climb which is pretty exciting the game is coming out in a, about a week uh, it's coming out on april 4th and for those who don't know, Sky Climb is a game where you have to grab blocks and push yourself to move from obstacle to obstacle uh, to get to the finish line, basically. And we'll show some footage there. Um, but uh, Raphael, can you tell us in your own words what the game is about? Sky Climb brings uh, experience, uh, first person platformer experience that you can't have in any other means except for virtual reality because you're immersed and you have to use your own movements to progress. So instead of pressing a button to jump or perform a movement, you do this movement in your real life. So it's basically something that you can experience as a single player through a campaign of six, five levels. But you also offer a multiplayer experience that's inspired by the chaos from the Fall Guys match. So you have four uh, other up to other five friends and also 24 bots. So it's really chaotic. Everybody's slapping the bots and the other players. And we also did a level editor so that the community can create their own ideas and bring it to the game. We've seen that this is uh, something really nice. So the people can share the expectations about the game and create crazy stuff like super hard levels to, for the others to beat. And we plan after the launch, we also plan to keep it updated, new single player levels, new customizations, new uh, multiplayer levels, so that we can have a really good game. I like that. And um, so, you know, we're going to dig deeper also in all these modes, you know, single player, multiplayer and level editor. But before we do that, um, can you talk about how Sky Climb was created you know how how did it come up as an idea and then <laughs> you were laughing because yeah. we both know you know it's, that it's I know, a crazy it's a good story uh, yeah and when i talk about the story people always tell me it's really different because usually we have developers the, they start to be more like business oriented and i was a business guy that <laughs> i decided to start developing so I I was migrating from industrial training to games and I decided I should learn more about what we use to develop so a real engine and I decided to do a prototype myself. I played a lot of VR games but I didn't have experience developing uh, any game before and I decided to try things in VR and something that I like very much in many games is the um, climbing mechanic. Like you throw yourself from an obstacle to the, another and I said, okay, let me study how to make this in, in VR. And I did a, a quick tutorial. I think it took like a day to create the mechanic, but I'm not a, <laughs> a very good developer. So I didn't know how to use gravity exactly. And I created my own code for the gravity. So, and the gravity was wrong. Like it was much lower than uh, the real one. But the felt I felt so good when I jumped the first time. I said, I, I like it. Uh, I said, it's good, but does it make a game? <laughs> because it was just a mechanic. And I decided to add a challenge. So the second thing I created in Sky Climb was the crocodile. So just <laughs> the first thing you had were many cubes and a crocodile that runs towards you. So you had to move yourself. And I, I decided it was good. I, I was so proud of it. I said, oh, okay, my, I got my wife. I said, 
you have to check this like what, what do you feel do, does it, is it nice so, yeah, it's good like it's crazy to do the jumps in virtual reality and I showed everybody my father my my brother <laughs> I said I, I'm going to try to make this again I said I I will try to develop some levels and then when I think it's enough I showed my partners and see what they they really know about games what they think uh, and I decided to develop almost like an idea a day for the for the content. So uh, small levels and try to bring different things about the game to prove that we can do a lot of different things with this mechanic. And after three months, I think I started in May, and by the end of July, early August, I thought I was ready for a, a real feedback. And but feedback from your friends like my partner are also my friends uh they tend to be good like people love you so yeah. they they will try to talk now nice about the things you bring you need to show it to your enemies you know that that's yeah where you get feedback. <laughs> if you have enemies that you can disclose things it would be much easier yeah. but i said okay I, i'm gonna show them and see what they say and try to think about it and I said, and they really enjoyed the game. And I said, I believe them because they play until the battery of the quest ran out. <laughs> like it was a fully charged quest. And they played my demos <laughs> until they couldn't. Like they didn't finish all the levels, but they, they finished the quest battery. I said, I think we should produce it. Uh, let's let me organize the ideas for at least a couple of months. Uh, I was also going to be a father. <laughs> That's weird. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> well, it's, it's been, it must have been well, a while now, but you know. <laughs> it, it, it was a busy a busy time. So I, I did the plan like the first months of development. And I had to ask my my partner Kayla to to assume the role of a, a, a producer in PO for the first months because wow. the day start the project start in the week, I became a father. So I had to leave for a month. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> the company before to yeah. to get back to the project but that was like uh we started the game very focused on testing and implementing things fast and check if they were good enough and if they were we try to develop more of that so i think this was core to the to your development like core yeah i mean and uh, uh, you had a pretty good plan on how many levels you wanted to make how much time you wanted to uh to you know to make them uh, and all that i think this was my insider business guy <laughs> talking i had to have a plan like how many months how many artists how many developers to to do the game and I said, OK, I have enough, uh, a plan enough. I thought about, I think I can create uh, a certain amount of levels uh, per week alone. So when I have developers, it's going to be much faster. It's going to be easy, like right? a, every 15, easy, like 15 days. I have a whole world new and 10 levels. Uh, OK, let's start and see what happens uh so when i just started uh the project was slightly different from what we achieved uh i think we did change but for uh the game is better than the original plan <laughs> the plan was wrong i didn't knew what was going to happen and i'm glad that we could change it along the way but uh it was for the whole time, for the whole cycle, we had a plan and we weren't afraid of changing this plan according to what we discover about the game. Because you have an idea of what the game will be, but as you develop, you discover things and you have to redesign your plan. That's tough because, yeah. um, you know, as a director, you you can't change too much you know during production yeah. because yeah it's a balance like you can risk the whole thing but at the same time you see value in what you discover it was like 
I think one of the most important decisions when we start the development, we we start with an art team and we have a art guideline for developing levels that were really in the sky. So everything was far in the foggy lands in the sky. And I said, okay, I want this because uh, we were advancing fast. It was nice enough to play the levels. The Let's see what we can get. And we did word one and word two like this. And then word three was under the sea. And it was really different from the other ones. Like as we were under the sea, we couldn't be in the sky. So you had the, the water top. And it, it was much prettier than the previous ones. Everybody was playing, saying, man, this is so awesome. Like the third level, the third world is, is great. And we just look back and said, ah, we were wrong. <laughs> 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 we should design all the levels like World Tree. <laughs> we have to make it much richer, like with more assets. Oh, I said, okay, guys, I will try to make time for us to go back to work one and two and, and do it again. And, and you have to be always thinking about this, like, exactly. as you develop, you discover things and you have to go back to improve things that you did earlier. So yeah. Yeah, in, a, in a reasonable time. <laughs> but, in a reasonable yeah. time, yes. Yeah, uh, so, uh, you know, we talked a little bit about the single player, so let's dive a little bit deeper into that. So uh, I think one of my favorite world was actually the, you know, the Halloween or like the dark, dark, scary darkness kind of world. It was a really fun one because, you know, I like challenges and this one was a little bit later on in the world. So uh, you guys played a little bit more with the difficulty. So it took me, you know, a little bit more time to, uh, to finish that one. But um, in terms of that, um, how did you guys like put in some some variety? Uh, what were the thought process on doing that, and making sure that all of the worlds were like fresh, you know, and and keep entertaining? Yeah. We we really, really cared about bringing this uh, to the play, player, uh, following its journey through the campaign. So we divided the game in in ten levels. So every 10 levels, we changed everything. We changed the art style, we changed the mechanics, we changed the enemies. And just to to make clear, like your tie does a lot of sense in, <laughs> in this podcast because we, we thought about old school games like from the 90s, the platformers like Mario. So we have a boss fight at the end of every world. So every... 10 levels we end with a boss fight that's almost uh, a final test to that world so we bring everything you learned from the previous nine levels and we bring to the fight and after you beat the boss you re you move forward to the next challenge and we thought that it was important to gradually uh, make the game more challenging because it's something physical so you gain experience like you get better at the jumps and everything not only because you learn about the game but your muscles they get better to understand and react to what you're doing and that's something that people need time to get uh, uh to understand the mechanics to get the neck of it so uh we thought that like, 10 levels were enough for you to master uh, a concept of the game, and after that, I could introduce new elements to the to the gameplay. So the first level is all about movement. So we are just asking for the players to move faster, move more precise, do long jumps, do a, a lot of different core mechanics. And the second one is about using items, so more combat. So you have the pistols, the water pistols, to defeat enemies and, and progress and we decided that we would do a total different pace. So in the first one you are free to move as fast as you can to the final uh, to the to the end of the level. 
But in the second one, every level you have to solve some kind of puzzle. You can't run to the end of the game. You can run, but you have to solve the puzzles. Mm. Because we thought this would catch players' attention. Like it's not only a speed running game; it has more depth. And ever ever cycle was like this. So now we are underwater. What are we gonna do? We invert the gravity. We add a dolphin. We add new blockers. We really uh, thought about how we change the way the games played, mm. and, and and we keep this to the end of the game. One of the things we were worried when the game was finished was that man, we have so many awesome content by the end of the game. Should we bring it <laughs> to earlier levels just for people to to know it? And we said. No, it's okay, and you help us in this I decision. I remember that. Because, yeah, yeah. It's like it's a uh, a good feeling for the player that's like he's decided to play the whole game, mm -hmm. and he's rewarded with those new mechanics uh, after the, he beats a, la a world. So we we said that's okay. It will be a a reward for the guys that they complete the game. We don't have to have everything in the in the first world yeah I, so it's, uh, it's a gamble but we think this uh, it will be good that, yeah that's something that i really appreciated and i'm happy that uh you know what i mentioned about that was you know in, in the same thought process that that you had and but you still kind of like have little teases right because in world one you uh use the gun for the boss so when I saw that, I was like, oh, cool. So I'm probably going to use that later on, you know, so I, I couldn't yes. wait. So so I like that, you know, you still get little teases like that once in a while. Um, yeah. So uh, for the people who don't know, uh, how long do you, like, would you say that this single player campaign is? We believe that an average person could solve the campaign around to seven to ten hours of gameplay so it's uh ever words is designed to be played in one hour and as a, it's a it's a physical game you get tired <laughs> after yeah. you beat a whole world yeah. <laughs> so we, we decide like I, we believe that the way people play the game is like they they have some free time and uh, one hour of gameplay and they can experience a whole world and then after they beat the world they are excited about the next one but they can they will rest a while after uh, after playing more so it's currently it's uh, around that time it depends on how fast people get the neck of the game like how they uh, some people for some people it's easier for others they have to get more experience before advancing but we thought that this is a good amount of single player campaign for for the launch maybe we can we will try to have new levels uh by the end to reward players that complete the game if this is not included in the current game but i think it would be nice like we don't other thing like the whole design of the game prioritized freedom. So we don't have a scripted path for you in the game. Like if you're able to do that jump, it's your path. I won't create some crazy mechanics to yeah. uh, to punish the player if he does it. Yeah. Uh, we have simple rules, like you have jumps of a maximum of 12 seconds. Yes. And that's that's it. Like if we're able to get to the to the next point in this interval, uh, congratulations! That's what we are looking for. I like that, and, and also, because um, yeah, so, sorry to interrupt, um, but I, I like that because um, uh, because because like you, like you said, you get the freedom of everything. So sometimes uh, I was playing and and I was using my cre creativity. I was like, oh man, what if I hit that angry boy? would it mean maybe faster and you know reach the finish line a lot faster and uh i was able to do it sometimes i was stubborn and it took me like maybe half an hour to make it work but <laughs> that's the nice thing you allow these kind of mechanics so it's good yes even if you want to use the 
enemies at your favor. Like if you manage to do so, it's, we are okay with that. Like some uh, testers in our company, they were like, oh, but this like people can use it to like it's an enemy, but people can use it to go faster. I said, it's okay. If people manage to do this, it's kind of fair. Like it's a challenge. It's, I think the game is okay with this. And also the game prog progression, it has a lot of freedom. So you, you advance in the campaign by collecting stars. You have three stars every level, depending on the time you finish the level. But you have 195 stars, but just need 60 yes. to unlock the whole campaign. And we think this is good because I don't... Uh, you, you don't have to master uh, a world to advance to the next one. It's just a few stars and and the reason why we, why we block the content uh, at, at the beginning of the game for some for a period of time we thought let's make everything available for the players at the start but it's it's risky because we noticed that some people they for some reason they decide to skip the first two words and started like in, in the third or the fourth word and they were complaining like the game's too hard they said you're doing wrong like i was trying to teach you a lot of things in the beginning of the game so it's it's just for uh avoiding this kind of behavior but besides this if he thinks it is enough to it's enough to face the final enemy of the game just go there man you if you're able to do it go <laughs> you're free wow. to make that's awesome so guys just uh you know a quick tip uh when you play the game if you want to jump into multiplayer definitely play world one one first because that gives you basically a tutorial and just a gist of all the kind of abilities <laughs> they can do it's not just like grabbing blocks uh there's a lot to it like there's a lot of abilities that you can use at the same time so uh just, just a quick tip you know when you start the game um i have an interesting question in the chat someone is asking uh miss phoenix is asking how many blocks do you think are in the game I believe there are 700 blocks per level, like oh, wow. six, five levels should be something. I can't do the math yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in my mind, but this would be a good guess for the single player campaign. And we had 13 levels in the multiplayer. They are around a thousand cubes for each level. So should should be around this, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, just <laughs> a lot of cubes. <laughs> Take out your calculator and <laughs> Phoenix, and <laughs> you can figure it out. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Um, no, that's cool. You know, uh, you mentioned that the, the campaign takes about seven hours if you're an average player. But uh, I consider myself good at platformers. But the thing is that I was very stubborn and I wanted to get every star for every level, right? So it actually took me about seven to eight hours to, to finish it. Um, yes. I know that you also mentioned that you want to make if you do end up making more level you want to make them harder uh please don't make them as hard as level seven as world seven world seven <laughs> is so brutal like this i couldn't i couldn't yeah. actually do it like it's so cool it's such a cool challenge and you know i'm looking forward to get back into that yeah uh, like and it's also an old school game designing like a boss rush yeah it's something like i took it from like mega man early games in which you have to defeat all the bosses again uh, we are trying to figure out like how to what would re reward players after beating the campaign mm -hmm. we know that uh some people like challenges but we are trying to to understand it better so it's we are very open to hear the community especially in the vr monkey discord vr monkey tribe so if you are there and want to to give us ideas about what to do with the game it's a uh, it's always good to discuss with the players by the way guys uh, the um the discord link is in the the, do the comments in my description of my video so if you want to join feel free to do that it's right in there so uh, you don't need to search for it okay. Uh, we are trying to figure out like we have some people that like china challenges and as we are doing a game that's accessible for everyone the campaign is 
it's a challenge, but it's not that tough. <laughs> Uh, we we want to, something that I would love to have in sky climb and we don't is a grappling hook. So fun to have a grappling hook in in virtual reality, but we still don't have it. Like there are a few things that we I would love to add to the game. I'm not promising anything, but uh, I really would like to have. On um, a world that you just can unlock after having 120 stars, and then give more content to people that took their time to complete, like really complete the game, like you. You yeah. played not only once; you want to the three stars, yeah. and uh, it's a it's a nice reward that uh, we want to bring to the game. Yeah, yeah, I, I hope so. You know, like this is something that I want. I want to see the game grow more updates maybe a sequel with even more you know new content that would be uh, amazing i really wish for the game to you know uh when the game comes out actually i'm i'm hoping to jump in and you know have some people in multiplayer that i can just randomly join and have some fun with um you know because it's an app lab there you know there's still a, a lower amount of multiplayer people but if you guys are, uh, you know, want to play multiplayer with some people, uh, the community manager, uh, Ste, is doing a um, multiplayer event every Friday. And actually, they're doing one uh, right after the stream. So if you want to join uh, the multiplayer, uh, please go ahead. The, you just check in my uh, description again. Uh, I do have a link to, to their channel. So um, check it out if you want to play. Um, so speaking of multiplayer, um is there any features in multiplayer that you've implemented uh to make the player to uh you know to keep them play more and more you know do you have like some kind of like addiction for people to just keep playing we like for the single uh player campaign we thought about we need to reward people that play the multiplayer and one of the things we did is adding um occurrence to the multiplayer uh, matches so you have uh, from 15 to 40 diamonds every game ever multiplayer match that you can earn and use those diamonds to get skins so you have different customizations like you have uh like a, a rock player you can be a cloud you can be <laughs> a lot of crazy things a computer we have many different skins and by playing the multiplayer you unlock those skins and something that we will try to launch after the um, update after the launch is a seasonal skin something that we offer just like for one month yeah and you have to gather a certain amount of diamonds in this month otherwise it's gone like next month it's gonna be super expensive or not even be available <laughs> at the store nice. so uh we are planning uh something like this so that people keep playing and have a goal like why i'm playing Sky climb this month or this week because I have a I want to unlock this yeah. golden monkey. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, or uh more aesthetics that comes from previous game like Galaxy Kart, right? Like I would love to see uh um, yeah. the robot, the pirate, you know, they're, they're all pretty cool. They're also nice. I, I also would like to have things from the previous games like the Vikings from Viking Days. <laughs> it's uh it's so good too. Uh, to, to bring those old memories to the game and maybe someday you'll have uh you know you'll be porting a game and you'll be like hey uh in the contract uh do you mind if we put that uh, we can use your uh your uh your character and you know <laughs> has a costume in our game you know you never know <laughs> the, cool. the vr community even among the devs i think it's so great like mm, there's no the studios they don't compute against themselves like yeah. we are building the virtual reality industry i think this would be possible even without uh a contract like we should talk with the devs like probably we can have a few characters from other games in the in sky climb just 
because the, it's a virtual reality yeah. world. You know? Exactly. Uh, I think one of the last game that was ported from you guys was Twilight Zone from uh, the developers Fun Train and on PlayStation VR 2 and uh, I've been, I've been spoken to spoken to some dev there and yeah they're super nice you know super cool welcoming people I know that you guys have, have spoken to um, uh, you know Sushi Ben developers who and you know again really nice people so so I, I have to agree really nice uh, dev that communicates between each other and you guys all know each other and I can see uh, you know you guys tagging each other on Twitter once in a while and uh, I like that <laughs> yeah. it's cool it's a really nice community. Um, now, uh, yeah. Mm. Sorry, sorry. Go ahead, Rafael. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, sorry. sorry. Um, so you know, since you guys are really good at porting, I was wondering: is there any chance that SkyClimb will come on other platforms, such as you know, Steam, PlayStation VR? For sure. Yeah. For sure. That's we are working hard on that already. Uh. It's just that it won't be available at the day of the launch for uh, MetaQuest, we are prioritizing MetaQuest, but the second device we are aiming is PlayStation VR 2. Okay. We love PlayStation VR 2 players, we have Galaxy Card there, we want to bring it to to then also. We just don't have a date, like uh, a day, but we expect to be ready in April. Like Very soon. Yes, the game is getting shaped really quickly we almost have everything is required for sony and we will start simple i don't think we will implement like cross play uh the day one but it has also this pot potentially we want to bring all the players on all platforms together i think it would be amazing i have a but uh for uh, at first we want to bring it to playstation and then we should have it for PC VR in Rift, but we are thinking about bringing it also to Steam VR because many PC VR players they they don't play on the Oculus system; they play on Steam. So, yes. Uh, but this is late after the PlayStation VR. I see. Um, I'm excited for PlayStation VR because I don't know why, but PS VR multiplayer is always active you know it, it's very cool so even uh, yeah. I've, I've heard that galaxy cart is doing very well on, on psvr 2 there's a lot of people playing there and maybe it'll be the same when uh, it goes into official meta quest store but um definitely you know when it does come to psvr 2 i'll definitely just you know give it a try for fun and see uh, uh how active it is there it'll, it'll be very fun um now I'm gonna like totally change subject because I I just have one question here where <laughs> I'm very I'm very intrigued about. Um, so in your Discord, uh, you know I, I'm very big into video game music. Like it's it's one of my passion. I've got like a huge collection of vinyl, uh, video game vinyl. I have a radio show where I actually put uh, video game music uh, in a local radio station. Um, but something that I've seen on your Discord is that you're going to change some music sometime soon, or you might have already done that. Ah, and, and I'm very yeah. curious, you know, why, why, why did you, do you want to change music in the game? Uh, we are almost with the game was almost finished. And then one of our artists was redesigning world two. And he wrote me, I thought I have to talk to you, but the game track i don't like the game track for word two so why <laughs> he said i don't i it's it's too calm and that's something we also change it along the development cycle because we when we first when we had the prototype it's it's like you see all the colors and everything is a balloon but the game is really intense. Like it's hard to play because it's physical and you have to get the the jump. So at first people, they concentrate a lot and they get angry when they don't do the perfect jump, but they then try to play again. And we thought maybe to try to conservate the player's energy, let's go with a lo-fi soundtrack. That's it's 
it's a slow and we start the game with this up to the world four we are with this kind of uh design and when we reach this uh that moment we decide to work in ui and the game intro and also the soundtrack again because we got some feedback like the music track for world one was not uh didn't match a platformer mm. so at that time we redesigned the world one but we thought that world two and three were far they were good enough but as he complained about the <laughs> The, the word too, I was saying, man, should we change it? I, because you, you also, after 18 months, I played a thousand times the game. I can't say how how many times I, I hear like I count the cubes from ever, <laughs> ever <laughs> level. You know the the whole thing. I said I, I know the music. You you said the, the number of the level. I know the music it, it has on it. I said, man. Is it bad? I say okay. I have to do something about it. I'm gonna put in the Discord, uh, in our Discord, the music and see what people, uh, what people think about it. And I, we thought that it was better to the game to have something more uh, with more energy to the to the to the level. So we change it in the and it's gonna be available just for the launch. I okay. think that the. Uh, it will be one of the improvements uh, during launch. So the soundtrack for War 2 is uh, completely new. And that was uh, the process to decide it. Like we received feedback, we thought about it. And we, f we think that like the community has always uh, a point to make. If it doesn't, if it's not too much complicated, we should do it. Like why yeah. not? <laughs> that's if we idea. can <laughs> yes i can't wait for it you know yeah. i i'm honestly gonna go even though i finished that those levels 100 percent I'm, I'm gonna go back i just want to see the, the feeling of, of the music and and maybe give some feedback you know just uh so uh see if the music is good or not but you know that's interesting because um in an interview with david weiss the composer of donkey kong country uh he made a song called sticker bush symphony and it is a oh. very very okay, a very very <laughs> relaxing song right it's, yes. it's actually my top song my number one top song and yeah, yeah. um maybe for me too it's, yeah uh, so, it's, so good. it's really good and he, he's been asked why is it so calm and he said that the level was such a frustrating level that the developers ask him to do a calm song to make it you know feel make it feel yeah. less frustrating so um f at first that's the reason why i thought these levels were so uh, the music was so calm is yes. because because of that yeah we thought we had this uh, line of thought but feedback from community was different <laughs> like what can i do yeah. <laughs> we showed the people people said to us i don't like it's too calm so i said yeah. man let's make something about it okay <laughs> Yeah, well, that's a good idea. You know, like it, you listen to the community that that's going to make the game better. Um, for example, with Galaxy Kart, you had a lot of feedback and, you know, you've added more tracks. You you know, there was a lot of uh, people um, saying that stuff that they don't like. So you've implemented some uh, quality uh, of life improvement and things like that. Um, so for sky climb is there uh, a chance that we'll see achievements at some point is that something that you like to implement yes. on on both on all of the platforms yeah so i for the playstation vr2 it's going to be launched with the achievements it's a requirement from uh, the oh. platform okay and we will probably bring this to to quest later uh that's something we 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 designed it recently and we thought that this is also uh really really nice for players that want to complete uh, something like they want to re reward for what they achieve in the game uh we think that the game already provides uh this real reward like you can complete the game and proceed you unlock new levels unlock new features 
but this is such a standard <laughs> in the industry right now like it's even awkward like you don't have achievements like it's new <laughs> maybe it's the old school design we choose for the game like the mario thing yeah mario didn't have achievements back in the 90s <laughs> it's crazy there's some people who's not gonna buy a game if there's no achievement you know this is what yeah. some people are in for so uh that's probably why you know playstation uh, you know, have to put that in, or you know more than me, right? You're 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 the one who, who uh, yeah, reports yeah. and all that. But that's cool to know. Um, now, you know, let's uh, derive a little bit. You know, uh, Sky Climb is definitely the highlight recently because it's coming out soon and, and all that. But I'd like to talk a little bit about other projects. That's what uh, you know happening with VR Monkey and and all of that. So. Um, can you talk, a, you know, we've been talking a little bit about Galaxy Card, but can you talk, a, you know, in your own words, maybe a little description or, um, you know, how, how would people be interested in this game? Galaxy Card uh, was our desire to bring an experience of Mario Kart VR to VR. Yeah. Like, there is no such a game uh, for the consoles before Galaxy Card. Uh, Pedro and Kayla, my partners, they had an experience of the Mario Kart uh, arcade in Japan. Mm. They had the full VR experience there and it was so awesome, but it was just there in an arcade in Shibuya. I don't know. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it, 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 you couldn't bring that to your home console. So we thought uh, we... Uh, the whole idea was let's bring this to to people uh, the consoles and we created a, a a whole galaxy of racing levels uh for the players so it's an original ip from vr monkey we designed all the levels the ch characters and we tried to bring this unique feel of uh, arcade combat uh, mechanic with the novelty of your character has a special move yeah so it's also important the character you choose from like it has a unique uh, skill and this makes ever uh, match different depending on what your uh, friends what they choose and what you choose as a character and how and what's the course you're gonna run so uh, that was our our goal for galaxy card it's not it's just available for playstation vr and and also steam it, it's available on pico but it's not available on the official store from meta it's on app lab right now so you can experience uh, a Mario Kart racing for quests if you look for for the app lab. That's good. That's good. Um, so it's nice, you know. We need a genre for any type of games, and uh, it, you know, Galaxy Kart is a good one to step into that if you like, you know, silliness. If if you want to make enemies, friend or frenemies is is the word for you know. Yeah, frenemies. Yeah, frenemies. <laughs> And uh, no, that's good. You know, I think the game started out uh, with like four to eight maps, but now it has more uh, sixteen yeah. or more, right? It's been it's been uh, in development for a while, or, or it's been updating, but more updates in a while now. Yeah, we did uh, a huge work updating the game in the past month, past year. Like it was, uh, we launched the game in the best shape possible for the time and we had to do it at that point and we heard the community feedback was it's a short game like that's four <laughs> tracks yes how you there we say okay guys we we will uh we 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 plan to work on on the game and the support the community gave us it was the full you need to to move forward uh, and bring it now it's 18 tracks and has a championship mode like mm -hmm. now we feel that the game is complete now we have everything we desired at first uh, so it was intense process of hearing the 
community that's from PlayStation, they, they are awesome people. They play a lot of the game and they, they gave us feedback about what they were experiencing. And then we try to improve it, like monthly improvements since the launch. It is, it's been a, a journey. It teaches a lot of new things to the studio. So developing Galaxy Card, we learn a lot of things we are going to reuse it on SkyClimb and things that we are going to use for the future titles. So it's also uh, developing games is also an, an exercise of uh, like you even I believe that even more if you develop in the same genre, but you learn things that you can for sure use in the next title and improve it every time a little bit yeah it's a learning experience throughout your career you know you, it's always going to be new things that you learn and I, I like that it's going to be interesting to see you know what next what's coming up next um rafael uh i have two more questions i know we're kind of running out of time i just want to make sure that it's okay with you if we if we go through these two questions okay i, I might go short in the answers yeah. because i'm really out of time but okay sounds good first question is uh do you have any other games that you guys are are working on right now if you're allowed to answer that i'm allowed to say that we do have but i can't say exactly what <laughs> <laughs> that is good. We have a new game planned for 2025. Uh, I think late 2025. And another title that should be should have a, a, a real larger scope. I, we don't have a date for that. Okay. But uh, we are really excited. I like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm very intrigued. Like I said, VR Minky is a powerhouse. And, you know, you guys are like a force not to reckon with. So it's going to be cool. Uh, last question is... Uh, wait, what was my last question? I'm having a blank. Um, yes. So I've noticed that the games that you developed so far, Galaxy Card and Sky Climb, are very friendly, right? Like it's for a game for everyone and things like that. Is that where the studio is uh, going for? Is that going to be, you know, um, what other games you'll be putting on? Or is that not on the mm. table? It's possible that you make other games and other type of like, uh, you know, um, more aggressive and things like that. I think it's possible. Okay. Like it's not something that we have uh, the like at the core of VR Monkey. We don't have a statement like we okay. don't do. Yeah. <laughs> we only do family friend games. Yeah. Uh, we thought that those concepts, Galaxy Card, Sky Climb, they really fit in this type of uh, of concept. Something that could be uh, for all ages. Uh, maybe the cartoonish style uh, doesn't make it clear that it could be enjoyed by mature audience. It's not only for kids. Oh, no. Uh, uh, yes, uh, it's like for anyone that likes enjoy platformers. And we think that the platformer has a good fit with this type of uh, aesthetic. But for like we... We're not close to more uh, mature concepts like use of violence, guns. It's okay. We, we and as 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 a studio and as gamers, we we also enjoy this kind of uh, of gameplay. Also, it's just that you have to do one thing at a time. Like, don't try to mix everything yeah. <laughs> together in the same title. So we. Uh, I think that's it. Like yeah. for the next uh, for the next games, we for sure we can bring things different. Yeah. Well, well said. I like that. I like uh, how you explain, you know, how Sky Climb is not just you know made for kids, giving the aesthetics and all yeah. that. So uh, I like that. I think you would you said that better than I would ever do. So uh, thank you for for doing that. So Raphael, yeah. thank you so much for coming here today doing the interview really appreciate it to, for you to take your time and come here and talk about the game uh that's coming on april 4th uh i want to say good luck uh i want you know the game to succeed so much uh i'll be there on the discord uh talking to everybody and every new member who comes in have questions and uh you know want to play some games uh i'll be around 
and talking there. So uh, again, I'm sure there, Rafael, you'll be there too. Uh, is there anything? <laughs> yeah, is there anything you'd like to say before we uh, end the interview? I would like to thank you for for your time and uh, for hosting the this talk too, and also for everyone here at the in the chat. It was really great to talk about SkyClimb. And please, if you want to bring your feedbacks to to us, join our Discord, uh, talk to VR Monkey. We are really uh, experienced about listen to the community and we'll do our best to achieve all the expectations it's just that it sometimes takes time <laughs> but, yeah but we for sure we're interested to hear and and try to make our best yes and you guys are pretty quick at fixing bugs and, and all that too uh, that i've reported so that's good um so guys the uh, again the discord link is in my description if you want to check it out i'll also have the discord for vr uh, sorry the twitter uh, for VR Monkey and SkyClimb, if you want to, you know, tag them or uh, see, uh, get up to date with the latest content. Uh, but with that said, guys, thank you so much for coming in. Uh, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you enjoyed the, the content. I'll be doing a lot more VR stuff, and maybe one day we'll have Rafael again on their next game in late 2025. You never know. Uh, we'll, hope, we'll hope for it. But uh, yeah, with that said, thank you very much, everyone, and have yourself a wonderful rest of Friday. Bye.